Okay, go ahead and download Composer from Composer.net. Just click Download Composer for Mac or for Windows. Once you download it, grab it from your Downloads folder or your desktop. I have stuff downloaded to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the DMG file that got downloaded. And it's going to go ahead and install Composer. So here's Composer. And what I need to do is to drag this into my Applications folder. Once you have done that, you can double click on Composer. It will warn you that it's an application downloaded from the internet. Click open. And if you see this, you're ready to go. That's how you go ahead and download and install Composer. That's the first part for this tutorial. Next, I'm going to show you how you set up your web folder on your desktop for your site that you're working with using Composer. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because I don't want to show the tips every time I I turn this on so I'm going to uncheck that box and then click close. On my desktop I have a portfolio folder that's where I have already started to build my website that is going to be my portfolio. In your case you could probably have it named something differently like my site or portfolio or my portfolio whatever it is everything that you do needs to be inside a folder so we need to go ahead and point composer to understand that all the files are in this folder to do so we're gonna go to the site manager which is this area let's go ahead and click on this button which allows you to edit the site list which will allow you to go ahead and navigate to where your portfolio or your website folder is. Mine is called portfolio and it's on the desktop. So I'm going to go to desktop, select portfolio and click choose. Just leave this as is and then click OK. Now on the left hand side when I click on the little triangle it will allow you to see all the documents that are involved with the template that you got. So for instance for my index document I just double click index and I should be able to go ahead and see my web page index file, which I can also change depending on what's changeable. If it's a graphic, obviously I would need to replace graphics if it's graphics. If it's text, I can go ahead and obviously replace the text. If I open the resume, say, and I want and I want to go ahead and change something in here, like for instance, maybe I don't want to go ahead and have this heading right here. I can go ahead and simply select it and remove it and then save and that has saved the local file not the file on the actual server. For that I'm going to show you how to upload those files using a little different method that I think is easier. So that's how you go ahead and modify a page and how you set up the folder so that Composer can see it. In the next part I will show you how to create a brand new document. I'm going to give you a tour of all the buttons that are available here in Composer. The new button obviously creates a new page so when you click on it it just creates a new page. It shows you each page as a tab so if you right click that's two fingers on your touchpad one click and then go to close tab then it closes the tab. There's the open which will go ahead and look at open local files, save, publish, which we're not going to use, anchor, link, this is where you make the links, image, table, form. If you know HTML, you can edit HTML by clicking HTML. And you can go ahead and do other things here, like selecting the body text, indentation, increasing the size, bold, italics just like a word processor alignment so if you want to create a new page from scratch you will go ahead and use the same idea as how you use word to create a new word document if you have however a template which you want to use over and over like on my projects folder I have different projects let's say I want to add a 13th project well if I open project 12 it has a place for images, a little description for 
what the images are about in a navigation toolbar right there. That's pretty much my template. So if I go to File, Save As, and save this as Project 13, notice that it knows to keep it in the projects. It is going to go ahead and save Format XML files. That's OK, just save. And then you might not notice the change right away over here. Just click this button. What it does, it refreshes the cache so it can show you that Project 13 is there. And at this point, you would go ahead and select a picture that you want to put in there. I just clicked on the picture that you needed to show you how you add a picture. You click on Image. You click on the little yellow folder. And you go ahead and navigate where your image might be. Make sure that it's inside the folder for the web, right? And then you go ahead and select the image you want to get. You click Open. You see a little preview here. If you want to add alternative text, you go ahead and type it in. You should. Then click OK. And then it places the graphic right there. If you want the graphic to be clickable, that means if you want people to click on the graphic and something happens, then that's a link. So we want to click on the image. Click where it says link. And then you want to go ahead and link it to whatever it is that you want to link it to. In this case, if you have a PDF, you can go ahead and link to your PDFs folder, which would be, again, inside my portfolio, PDFs. And then maybe you have a PDF that will show you more of what that project was about. Then you click OK. And now this image is clickable. If you want to change the text, and you should, you should go ahead and change the text. If you click Split down here, you will be able to see the HTML corresponding to where you have clicked. If you highlight a portion, you will see the HTML corresponding to the highlighted portion. If you click Source, you will see the entire HTML document. This might be important in case you want to go ahead and have something that turns on. Notice here the list. The last project is highlighted. That means it's on. So class equals on, but the other ones don't have it. I would only have the opportunity to change that here. You're looking at the source, just like how I showed you last week. Okay. So split source shows you the whole thing. Design shows you back that. You want to create duplicates based on a template. You can do that. If you want to remove a document from here, you select the document you want to remove. In this case, is my project 13. And then you click on this button, which allows you to delete that file. It will ask if you're sure. Click OK. And now the document will be gone. And if I reload this, now my page 13 is not here. That's how the workflow happens in Composer, very similar to the workflow in Dreamweaver. Next, I'm going to show you how to use an FTP application to upload the files and your website to the server.